halfway between the River Liffey and St. Stephen's Green in Dublin stands a university that has been at the heart of Ireland's capital for over four centuries. It's a place of secrets and traditions. Of stories of the past and visions of the future. Where is the water on Mars? Where has it been in its history? And where is it likely to be now? A place whose history echoes beyond the walls. It's a place where people live and learn. This is a year in the life of some of the 20,000 people who occupy these 50 historic acres. This is Trinity. Dr. Mary Burke spent 10 years working for NASA and continues to cast her eyes beyond the Earth's atmosphere. For my research and for my teaching, um, I deal with uh, the planet Mars uh, as an extreme environment and try to understand its history better. I am following the mantra that NASA had in the last decade of follow the water. Where is the water on Mars? Where has, has it been in its history? And where is it likely to be now? Specifically, we can't go as human beings to the planet Mars at the moment. Um, we're planning to, perhaps in the next 30 years. But to understand that planet, we've got a lot of technology that we've sent there that have landed on the planet, that has dug holes for us to analyze sediment, and is um, orbiting the planet at the moment. And we receive all this data back. So yeah, geography is at the forefront of doing investigations, physical geography. We have also found evidence very recently it looks like there might be locations on Mars slopes that seasonally have melt water flowing slowly down the slopes. And so if you have those conditions, you have the potential for, for life to be there or to have been there. Mary's latest discovery is that she and her work are about to receive a celestial acknowledgement at the ceremonial highlight of Trinity's calendar. Next week is Trinity week. And on Monday, Trinity Monday, um, there are some people, it's going to be announced that they have received fellowship, which is um, an immense honor for a member of academic staff. And it's recognition of their um, contribution, their standing in the international community. It's given to a few people. I'm not sure who's receiving it or how many are receiving it this year, but uh, on Monday, I'll, I'll be receiving it. A few weeks ago, I, I got a letter. Top secret. I'm not supposed to be even telling you. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to keep it quiet. For nearly 400 years, the Provost has stood in Front Square on Trinity Monday to announce the election of new fellows and scholars. This year, Dr. Mary Burke's name is on the list. We're asked to dress up uh, in our attire from our uh, highest degree granting institution. So I did my PhD in the Australian National University in Canberra, so that's, this is their official PhD graduating gown. So the colours are different, the shape of the hood is different for different institutions. And the piece de resistance, that's, um, which is the bonnet. Jeez. So, come here, Ray. Welcome to the Trinity Monday announcements. I think it's important to mark these occasions, and I, I do love the ceremonial part of it. Perhaps it's way back in kind of my Celtic heritage or something. I like to mark occasions. We all do. We like a good party. The following have been elected to Fellowship of Trinity College, Dublin. Dr. Juan Pablo Labrador. Dr. Mary Burke. I've 
absolutely delighted. I'm, I'm thrilled. It's a very exciting occasion. So my sister Kathleen, uh, my sister Caroline, my sister Geraldine and my mum. They travelled far and wide to come and it was a nice surprise because I didn't know that they were coming. So that is lovely. Um, my father passed away recently. He's a Trinity graduate and he would love to have been here. So we're all here in memory of him too. To celebrate their combined academic excellence and endeavour, the fellows and the scholars face off in a game of marbles. There's a hard battle going on right now. There's a competition on between the fellows and the scholars. The fellows are not doing too good right now. I think we're going to give that to Blue. Yes. One point to scholars. One point to scholars. It's an ancient, ancient tradition here and it's lovely to participate. where we actually just have a little bit of fun and laugh and, and it gives an opportunity for the scholars and fellows to mix together on an equal basis or maybe not so equal because we're losing.